What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fowler, my man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We're going to be talking through this week's golf tournament, which, by the way, for some reason, I just I had in front of me and then I just dropped it out again. I I, I do this all the time with the golf tournaments. It's, it's the RSM, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, RSM Classic. Um, Sheets, I, I didn't do well in golf last week, but I barely played. Um, I'm just sort of getting back in the swing of it. Sheets had the call. He did say that Finau was, he liked Finau to win it. Um, and Finau did win it. Unfortunately, we have no Finau. Well, not unfortunately, but we have no Finau this week. But good call last week. Sheets, how'd you do? And then we'll uh, jump into the slate. I did pretty well. Um, the the big value I had didn't didn't uh, make the cut, so it made it hard. But Fino, the Fino lineups obviously did really well. And uh, very, very interesting slate this week. Um, I'll talk about that when we get there. I actually did like a little video on it, um, which I put in the Saber Sim, uh, in the Saber Sim uh, uh chat uh which which i'll talk about when we get there it's i think it's really interesting we'll, we'll get there when we get there mm -hmm. um we'll start by tears but we don't need to do like the 10k and up because there's only two people um we we yeah, can we can do we can we can start with 9k and up. okay let's do that all right so yeah. who are who are your guys uh at the top of the list who you are most interested in okay let me share my screen um yeah. so as usual when you have these slates, I mean, for me at least, where there's no, you know, top players, what, what DraftKings does is they just assign salaries just kind of like across the board. And I feel as though the difference between these 9Ks and these 7Ks is very, very small um, in reality. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to, I think you got to prepare for that reality and that you can leave money on the table and don't, don't worry about the ramifications of it. Now, with that said, I do I do actually have Ryan Harmon as 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 a decent play here. Um, even though it seems like kind of obscene to play him at 10-3. Um, but I actually do have him as 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 a good play here. I'm not getting to, I mean, I'm not but I'm just not getting to. I don't have Seamus Power rated strongly at all here. Um, so he would be probably close to a fade for me if I was hand building. Um and then other guys in this range, even like the nine Ks and up, I'm not, I'm not getting them as much priorities. I mean, but you have to play somebody. Um, so I'm like kind of like scrolling down here to see who I like. I mean, I would probably fade most of mm -hmm. most of the nine K range. Uh, let me just see. Jason Day I have as my favorite, and then I have Kevin Mitchell. And then uh, Taylor Montgomery. Those are three guys. And pretty much everybody else, I think I'm fan. So I, I had Harmon, Day, and Montgomery, with Day being my favorite. Oh, there it is. Okay. So so we're on this very similar similar page. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll hold off on the other guys for now. We'll go through this and then figure out if I need to do it. Because I'm not all that excited about it either. I have the exact same take you do. Um, so I, I'm probably going to be lower on that, that range. And and the people, they're going to be forced into lineups because people are gonna, not, not going to want to leave money on the table. So yeah. Might be a good week to consider living leaving on the table, especially in the lottery. All right, down in the eight Ks. Uh, I, I guess I guess I'll start this one real quick. Um, I know Kucher is showing up as a as a really good play. I'm I'm still I don't know if how how I feel about that. I will go back to my guy Thigala. I'll go back to Rogers. I'll uh, Pendrith, Webb Simpson, and Davis Riley. Those are my guys. I have Davis Riley as the top 8K guy. Um, not by not, not by too much. I have him actually tied with with Wyndham Clark. And Wyndham Clark I have a little bit lower owned. Mm -hmm. The next guy I have is Justin Rose, who seems that seems kind of like a bad play, but that I have him. And then um Rogers, like you said, and then Taylor Pendrith. That's kind of like my eight Ks, but I have to say, I mean, I, we'll we'll get into it later, but but uh my my builds are probably going to be more in the seven Ks and even some in the six Ks, which we'll get to also. So, um, yes, I do like the eight Ks a little bit, and those are the guys I like: like Wyndham Clark, Davis Riley, and Taylor Pendrin and Patrick Rogers. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I can support all of that. I have Riley as my priority, so that's nice to hear. Um, and uh, really do like Pendrith, but. Uh, uh, probably not the worst week to take a shot on the lower stone guy in this thing in in, in uh Brendan Todd and and I'm probably going to to be a just a, a weirdo and just say okay well historically Webb Simpson and Justin Rose are significantly better than everybody in this tournament I'll probably play them together in a lineup or two um I know it says that that's not all that matters when it comes to golf but um I can talk myself into it just because of 
I don't think they're going to be particularly owned and they're essentially, you know, 2k cheaper than the other guys who I don't feel like there's any, any difference. And if it, if you had to argue who's better, obviously these guys are better golfers overall. They're just dealing with injury stuff, dealing with, you know, struggling years and all that stuff. All right. Uh, moving down in the seven Ks, I think there's a lot of ways to go. And I think you're not going to get a ton of options that I think we go 75 to eight, eight K if that's okay with you, just because there's yeah, a bunch of guys in this in this range why don't you why don't you start off from 7500 to 8k who you, who you like I think it's really important uh what i'm going to say about playing 7k guys 7k guys in general and especially like this week you're going to see like a whole bunch of 7k guys um at least on my sheets that are reasonable you know and 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 some guys in the 7k range that rate a little bit better and and don't play the guys that just rate a little bit better because they all get owned like way more than they should. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to, you have to accept that. Like I'll, I'll, I'll start with Andrew Putnam. So Andrew Putnam for me rates to be the best 7,500 and up guy by a decent, no, by, by some amount, you know? Um, but I'm looking at 17% ownership. Um, likewise, I see Aaron Rye rates as the next best guy over 7,500 for me. And I have him even like 11% ownership, like to, to compare those to other guys I have on my list, like, like Poston, uh, Chris Kirk, like the, these are guys that are much lower owned than the others. Um, Spawn is a little, he's getting a little ownership. So not so much him, but guys like Nick Hardy, and Lipsky, um, mm -hmm. Alex Small, he's maybe closer to 10%, but, but you have to, I think if you play these seven K's, just make sure you, don't play the chalky seven Ks. Um, they're just so close, honestly, to the others that that's where you can really just in, in GPPs get some some leverage and just get different. You remember, golf is still a very highly variant sport. Um, so don't don't get sold on like a seven like a lock seventy eight hundred player. You know, um, so that's I guess that's my analysis of the seventy five hundred. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I have, I mean, just in terms of the guys who I like, I have quite a number of guys because I didn't have a ton in the other the other ranges i have uh rye uh harris english kirk putnam poston and smalley as my favorites uh pretty much in that order but not entirely in that order maybe flipping some things around but that's what i've got right now and i agree that it, the ownership should dictate a lot of it um because i don't i don't think there's a big gap between any of these guys just like you said all right uh want to go seven seven k to seventy four hundred i guess yep so I actually do have a little something here. So, so, so my top guy that's under 7,500 is actually, I'd say only 10%, but maybe that's too high for, for this kind of range. But anyway, my top guy at under 7,500 is Lee Hodges, 73. Um, and then Taylor Moore at 7,400. He's only 6%. I see that. Hayden Buckley, same type of thing though. Um Make sure that you're not playing guys over 10% in this range. Steven Yeager, he's all right at 7%. And then I'll give you Troy Merritt also at 6%. Yeah, basically, I, I have the same list as, as you guys you just mentioned. The only the only guys I've added on to it are Svensson, Luke List, and Straka. And I really like Luke List. Um, he's my favorite of, of, the, of that range. Um, List, Straka, and Svensson. Time to get money back from Svensson here. He's keep keeps getting in my in my better lineups. Oh, I'm throwing one more at you because I'm because I'm going to be mixing a lot in through this range. Uh, Cam Champ. Uh, I'm oh and and of course I can't I can't play a I can't play a tournament without having one one general in there. <laughs> um, yep. So the Pat Patton Kazire will be will be in some of my lineups. Um, yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's this is not the strongest field of all time. Um, if you wanted something really, really low owned, uh, was, no one's going to play, probably including me. Molinari is another one who popped up for me a little bit, but I'm not all that excited about it. All right. Under 6K sheets. What do you so got? I have, I have a whole speech about this. So so why don't you start with your with under 7K? Okay. So I've got, um, for guys who I like, uh, favorite is Burmester at 6,300. Um, I have Smotherman, Percy, um, Halem Terran. And let me just make sure I'm not leaving anybody out. Um, Stuart Sink and Charlie Hoffman, I'm probably going to skip, but I considered them. And then uh, I had a friend who told me this Matthias Schmidt this week. He did his little update of what what, what he likes to tell me. Uh, Joseph Bramlett. I'm sort of just throwing out a bunch of different guys here and uh, don't have really strong takes on any of them. 
Okay. So for those of you that, that are wondering, you know, why we banged out pretty much this whole slate in like seven minutes. So I do want to spend a little bit of time on this next point because I, uh, I actually did a special video on this exact thing. So I want to share a couple of screens with you. First, I do want to share my, um, this is my projection screen. Now you'll see at the very top of the value list is Dean Burmester, and it's by a lot. Okay, like literally by a lot. So it's like 50 points higher than anybody else. Now remember, like Dean Burmester, he was a guy I thought was a great value last week at 7,800 in a much better field, whatever it is. Somehow 6,300, way too cheap. And he's emerging as clearly the best value play. Now, this 11% ownership thing is probably going to be too low. Okay. But, but so I'm sitting with this. I'm like, okay. So that's screen number one. So then I figured I would build some lineups with Saberson just to see, you know, how much I would get of Burmester if I put my projections. And now you'll keep something in mind is that Saberson is actually higher on Burmester than my aggregate projections. So I, I say this with a reason. So I put everything up in here. I'm just doing it live for you. And I'm going to do a uh, GPP build, 150 max, 150 lineups with the same, with the uh, custom projections, with the custom ownerships. And I want you to think about, as this is running, how much, um, whatchamacallit, how much Burmester you think we'd be getting out of this. Okay? I'm going to guess like, 30 percent you're gonna get 30 percent i was i was expecting maybe like 70 okay oh or or just because you know saber sim is kind of weird i would expect maybe 50 but you know i i could see 30 okay so this is this is the number we are getting a grand total of zero dean burmester okay it's because the the value because the 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 salaries all right so, wait, so i thought, was, I, thought I was hallucinating right yeah so i'm like okay so that's the first thing i thought of right is because of the salary but then you go down here and you're getting other guys that are like 6,800 that project like 10 points less than him. Hmm. You know what I mean? 6,700, Charlie Hoffman projects for 55 points and, and Burmester is projecting for literally 10 points more. So I'm like, what in the hell is going on? So the, the next thing I did was I said, okay, let me see how this is being ranked. Now this is being ranked by Saber score. Now we went over this a little bit, but when you rank things by Saber score, what Saber score does is it factors in like ownership and all that stuff. And the thing is, is that it must have really punished that 10% ownership number for, for Burmester. Mm -hmm. So like you see like all these other guys that gets ahead, like Hoffman, 0.8%, you know, Dylan Fratelli, 0.8%. You know what I mean? Uh, this other 1.5%. So that's why you'd be getting zero Burmester if you did this way. So then the next thing I thought of, ooh, but there's a way to there's a way around this, is instead of ranking them by Sabre score, you can rank them by projected score. Mm -hmm. So then if you rank it by projected score, you'd imagine that you'd get like 100% Burmester. But when I did this, you know what I get of him? Zero again. Huh. What in the hell is going on? That is right? really weird. So, so, but I figured it out, right? So so this is coming in, this is becoming a lesson on how to use Sabre sim. And we talked about this briefly when we had Jordan on, but it merits repeating. When you do a build, a GPP build, the first thing it does is it calculates by upside, Sabre score, whatever, and it gives you this whole pool of, of lineups. Even if you then rank them by just projected score, it's still just taking the top projected score from that initial bucket. So basically – all the Burmester lineups didn't even make the top like 500 wow. because, even, because the difference between a 10% owned 6,300 guy and a 1% owned 6,300 guy is just enormous. You know what right. I mean? Right. Uh, as far as GPPs go. So that's why, you know, when I go over, you know, who I think are the best plays, it doesn't mean that you pull them in the Saber Sim, for example. And, and now you can listen. If you don't believe this and you think, listen, what's what's the big deal? 10% is not a big deal. I want him. Then you can certainly add it. Okay. But I'm just saying that that according to the algorithms or whatever, there's a really big difference between like playing a 1% guy and playing a 10% guy. Mm -hmm. And when you're dealing with like lower level golfers, you know, you don't really need to be playing those types of guys as chalk. Now, I will say just to kind of finalize what I, this thing is, if I did instead – decide to play 150 lineups 
and I put the cash settings in, mm -hmm. okay, then I will, I will I will save you the trouble. Wait, I'll, I'll get there in a second. It's it's going to be like put the cash settings in, then you get what you want or whatever you want. Then you get here it comes. Then you get ninety nine percent purpose. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> so, so like if you set the settings for cash. You get all the guys we talked about, Day, Harmon, Putnam, all this stuff. But when you start getting into the GPP world, it, it really, really rewards ownership fades, especially in golf. So I figured I would just give that as a lesson to you. And, and look, what that means is, listen, you want to play Burmester? Awesome. You could play him in, in, in three max. You could play him in, in, in the snowman. You know what I mean? Like you play him or whatever. But you, maybe if you play 150 and you're playing the lottery – you know, maybe you don't want to play. Uh, maybe you don't want to play him. Now, just for the, just for humor, if I set it for single entry GPP, now you think that might be splitting the difference? Now, again, I knew all I knew the answers to the last four runs I did because I did them before. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious if you set it to single entry GPP, what kind of exposure you get, if any? Let's just see. Um, single entry GPP, you still they still just refuse. To let you play Burmester. So I don't know what to say. So so I made a video and I put it in the Saberson Discord too. I'm like, Saber score versus projections, or what the hell does Saberson have against Dean Burmester? And let's just see if they comment on it or whatever it is. So mm -hmm. the quick answer to all this is Burmester is clearly the best play, but there's some algorithmic evidence to support not playing too much of him in GPPs. I like that. I think that's really interesting. And it's a really good little lesson on Saberson, at least. I mean, that's that's really interesting. I don't know the answer, but that's, that's, that's like it. it's pretty interesting. Um, it took no, up I mean, at least an hour of my morning dealing with it. So, <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's uh, with that. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's get to the game. That is pretty. That is pretty wild. Um, all right. So nine K and above. Who are you taking to win the tournament? Well, I can't. Has Harmon ever even won? He's won once. He has, I believe. All right, so I'll go Jason Day. That's who I was gonna pick. All right, um, so because fine. you're picking him, I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, Montgomery, but I don't mind. I, you know what? No, never mind. I'm gonna say Harmon, but I I do like Jason Day for better for what it's worth. Yeah. Um, and All I right, don't so under him. now we got to go under nine k. No, let's pick another guy in this range to make the top five. Another guy in the nine k's. Yeah, because that's what we usually do to make top five. You go, oh, winner, yeah, winner. yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's pick um, your next best nine. I guess I'll go Montgomery then. Okay. I will then go. Um, mm, the guy I haven't, we haven't talked about yet. I'll, I'll go Matthew Neesmith. Okay. Neesmith. So now we'll go under 9K, so 8K range to make top 10. Okay. Um, I'll take Davis Riley. I will go Wyndham Clark. Oh, okay. Now we'll go under 8K to make uh, top 20. Under 8K to go top 20. Um, let me just grab my sheet here. Uh, I'm on the wrong one. There. I'm going to go out on a limb and take Luke List. Yeah, I already emphasized Lee Hodgins, so I'll give you another one uh, that I didn't emphasize quite as much, but I think is almost as good. I will say Scott Stallings. Okay. And I'm going to give a little shout out to that. I, I still like Harris English a lot here. Okay. Um, all right. So six K. I mean, we're not talking about ownership to make the cut. I mean, it's just got to be Burmester. But you you want to give a second one? I mean, other than Burmester, um, just looking through my guys, I will say Smotherman. All right, Burmester and Smotherman. I like that. That's good. Yeah. Why not? And how about anybody over nine K to miss the cut? Uh, I feel like you've got a lot of choices here. You know, we didn't. I, I, I'm going to throw back. I, I might go back to Tom Hoagie just so when people see my lineups, in case I win something, that I might have a little bit of Tom Hoagie. Um, I'm going to say to miss the cut, a guy who doesn't miss a lot of cuts, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> uh, is uh, I'm going to take Joel Dahman. Yeah, I'll go with um, I'll, I'll I'll keep it real. I'll take the highest uh, salary guy. I knew you were going to do that. I'll go and save his power. <laughs> that makes sense to me. Um, all right, guys. Well, it should be a fun week. Um, hopefully, we can have a double sweat with NFL, and uh, which we're going to yep. come out with a video very shortly. I'll do yep. my core plays and everything for golf, and uh, hopefully we can have some sweats on Sunday. So good luck, everybody.